Hey guys, today I'm going to share with you 15 apps every drone beginner should know, starting with the first app, which is AirMap. Now AirMap is great because it provides easy to understand and up-to-date information about the areas you intend to fly to make sure your flights are safe and legal. There are locations that you might think are out in the open, there's nobody around and perfectly safe for flying but this could actually be within restricted airspace. And so this app allows you to check that to make sure that you are allowed to fly in them areas. So let's take a look at two scenarios. Let's say I wanted to fly in an area called Bally Castle. I can simply go to the search bar and type Bally Castle, which is in Northern Ireland, and you can see that the map goes to that location and there is no restrictions in place here. If I tap the restrictions icon, you can see there is zero advisories, which means there is no restrictions in place for flying in this location. But let's look at an area where there is some restrictions. So if I now take a look at Andrum, you can see there is actually an airport just below this time, which means there are restrictions in place and you need to be careful on where you're flying your drone. So if I tap the restrictions icon, you can see we have a controlled airspace and it lets us know about the airport. And you can see on the map where them restrictions are so that you can make sure you're not flying within them. Now, if you fly your drone in the UK, another app that you can use, and I recommend to find this information out, is an app called Drone Assist UK. Now with this app open, you can see it works very much the same way as the Airspace app. So right now I'm over Bally Castle again. And you can see there are no restrictions in this area and the top of the app is green just letting you know to follow the drone code but if i go to the search bar and again search for andrum and hit search when the app goes down to that area on the map you can see the top of the app changes to red and it says high risk so just around the airport here if i tap the restriction you can see this brings up the information on the bottom of the app and then if i tap each one of these restrictions, you can find out more information about what they are. Now, the last app you can use to find this information out is DJI's own GeoZone map. Now, this is actually accessible within the DJI Fly app if you're using the DJI RCM1 controller. That's the controller that you put your phone into. And it's also accessible within the DJI RC controller if you have the controller connected to Wi-Fi. So if you're using the DJI Fly app, you simply need to go into the app itself and tap the location on the top left of the screen and this will open up the DJI GeoZone map. And if you're using the DJI RC, again you simply want to tap the location on the top left of the screen and this will open up the DJI GeoZone map. And again you can search specific areas using the search bar on the top left of the screen. You can move the map around to look at areas you intend to fly and if a restriction is shown on the map you can tap this restriction to get more detail on the left side of the screen. Now the next app I use every day and highly recommend it for planning and managing your drone shoots. And that is Notion. Now Notion is an all-in-one workspace. It allows you to take notes, add tasks, manage projects, and more. Think of it like Lego. Notion provides the building blocks such as to-do lists, tables, etc. And this allows you to create layouts and systems with them building blocks. For me, I use it to create, manage and track my drone projects. And the nice thing is it syncs between your phone and computer. So before heading to a location, I will do some research on the computer and put together a document of some of the angles that I think would look good. I might even put some drone move ideas next to them angles so that when I get there, I know exactly the angles that I want to record and the moves I want to do in each of them different areas of a location. And I can also track my progress as I capture them videos and images. So after I've got a certain angle or I've captured a certain location, I can simply check that off and move on to the next one. Now just quickly, I want to say, if you're getting value from this video, I want to learn more about how to use your drones to capture beautiful images and professional videos, then I highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel and make sure that notification bell is on so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, when it actually comes to planning a drone project, one of the apps that is absolutely invaluable at the planning stages is Google Maps. You can use Google Maps to search and find good locations to go to with your drone for recording beautiful videos and images. And you can also look at an area you plan to record 
and find the best place to launch your drone from. Instead of doing that when you get there and, and wasting that valuable time, you can simply look up that location on Google Maps, find a location that is good for taking the drone off and is close to your subject, and then when you go to the location, you know exactly where to go to take your drone off from. And you can also use the app to find out how to get to these locations. So if it's a remote location or somewhere you haven't been before, you can obviously get driving directions. And you can also use the app to take a look at the walking routes at a location to firstly make sure that you're going to be able to get to an area you want to get to. And secondly, know exactly the paths you need to take to get there. Now for planning and scouting different angles to capture your drone videos and images from, I find Google Earth to be better. And that's primarily because of the 3D mode. So looking at a previous example of how I have used this app, I was trying to find the best angles to capture this abandoned house called Murr Hall from. So I played about with the Google Earth app and got this. Then when I headed to the location, I knew exactly where to place the drone to capture this angle from. And if you look at the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the end result looked almost exactly how I had planned it beforehand using this app. Now here's a top tip. If you're planning a recording of an area that you haven't been to recently, and you're using these images to plan angles, as in the example I just showed you, then you want to double check the date these images were captured to make sure the images weren't captured too far in the past and then there's a likelihood that the area may have changed since then. So to check this, all you want to do is you want to press and hold on the area that you're planning to capture your drone videos and images from until a pen icon appears. And then on the bottom next to imagery date, you will see a date of when these images were captured. Now you can also use this app to plan and visualize drone moves. So let's take a look at an example of doing just that. And you can again see just how close you can represent a drone move using this app, making it a very valuable tool when it comes to planning your drone videos. Now another type of app that I think every drone beginner should have installed on their phone for multiple reasons is a mobile video editor. The first reason is being able to post clips onto social media very quickly. Sometimes when I'm out on location and I get a video that I'm super happy with, I want to share it online quickly. So being able to put together a super quick edit on a mobile video editor, and then being able to post that online to social media very quickly is absolutely invaluable. The second reason is if the weather is bad, so say I've traveled a few hours to a location, it starts raining or the wind picks up and it gets too windy, but I know it's going to die down or the rain's going to stop in a few hours. Well, I can go back to the car and start putting together a rough edit or a quick edit of the sequence I'm trying to achieve with the clips I've captured so far. And lastly, if it's just a quick edit or a quick sequence, sometimes it can be faster to quick transfer the videos off the drone onto the phone, do the edit and post it online. Now I'm going to mention two mobile video editors that I highly recommend and use. And the first one I'm gonna start with is CapCut because it's free. Now CapCut is super easy to use and it has all the tools I need and know from using desktop based editors. It has layers so you can overlay video clips on top of other ones for adding things like B-roll. It has effects, transitions, and you can do color grading to make them tweaks to your clips to make them pop. Now I actually have a full tutorial going through the entire CapCut app explaining what everything does and how you can use it to put together a drone sequence. So if you would like to give that a watch, I will put a link to that tutorial in the description down below. Now the second mobile video editor I recommend and use is called InShot. Now this one is paid, but it has all the tools you need for putting together a drone sequence from start to finish. Now I also have a full tutorial of the InShot app showing you how to put together a drone sequence right from the beginning to the end, capturing all the clips you need on location, transferring them from the drone to your mobile phone, and then using the InShot app to edit a professional sequence. And again, if you would like to give that tutorial a watch, I will put a link to that in the description down below. So one of the most important things you should check before heading out flying is the weather. The last thing you want to happen is you look out the window and think, okay, it looks like a nice dry day. I'm gonna to head to this location with my drone. So you travel all the way to that location. And as you're getting your drone out, getting ready to fly, it starts raining and then the rain stays on all day. 
meaning you can't fly your drone. So you want to find a weather forecasting app that is reliable. Now I have tried lots of forecast apps and some of them aren't very reliable at all. You can get apps that say it's going to be dry at a location and when you get there, it's raining. So one of the ones I have found that is generally very reliable is the Met Office app. Now one of the nice features of this app if you are in the UK is the rain radar, which helps you see exactly where the rainfall is to more accurately see what it's like at the location you plan to head to at the time you plan to be there, meaning you can make a more informed decision of whether or not it's worth heading to that location to fly your drone. Now another app I highly recommend for any drone pilot is UAV Forecast. This app will tell you everything a drone pilot could ever need to know about the weather, temperature, wind, cloud cover, visibility, and more. You simply set the max capabilities of your drone, such as the max wind speed your drone can handle, and then this app will tell you whether or not it's safe to fly at a location. For example, I know the max wind speed capability of the Mini 3 Pro is 10.7 meters per second. So I can go in and update that in the settings, and then the box will turn red, and the app will say it's not good to fly if the wind speed at a location exceeds that. And you can also use the forecast slider on the bottom of the app to check this information R by R. Another app that is great for checking the wind speed and direction is an app called Windy. Now I really like Windy because it shows you the wind speed and direction visually. And this makes it really easy to see what direction the wind is blowing at a location so you can know if you're flying your drone in a headwind, tailwind or sidewind but it can also show you the areas of high wind speed and low wind speed. So you can see visually and very clearly in this example that the wind speed is higher off the edge of the coast over the water. So you will know that if you're flying your drone over the water off the edge of the coast, that the wind speed is going to be higher in this area. And it's very easy to identify them areas where the wind speed is higher by looking at this visual map. Now another app that can help you when flying your drone in windy conditions is an app called Wind Compass. Sometimes when you're standing in a sheltered location, it can be quite hard to know what way the wind is blowing because you can't really feel it blowing towards you. So you might not realize what way the tailwind or headwind is. But when you take that drone off up into them higher altitudes where the wind is stronger or out of that sheltered area, you can end up in a scenario where you fly your drone off in a tailwind, but when you turn to bring it back, it's now flying into a strong headwind and you might struggle to bring that drone back to you. So knowing what way the wind is blowing is absolutely invaluable. And the Wind Compass app will show you the direction of the wind as you turn your phone so that you know exactly what way the wind is blowing and can make informed decisions as to where and how far away you fly your drone in the wind. Now some of the best drone clips you will ever capture can be during a colorful sunrise or sunset. And using an app such as Alpenglow, you can have a much better chance of predicting when these are going to happen. With Alpenglow, you can put in a location and then using the various weather variables, it predicts the quality of the next sunrise or sunset. Now I use the free version of this app, which allows you to see the predicted quality of the sunrises or sunsets a few days in advance. And this allows me to see whether or not it's worth getting up super early in the morning, traveling a big distance to a location to capture a sunrise with my drone based on the predicted quality of it because the last thing you want to do is make all that effort and get there and in the end not get a nice sunrise. So a prediction app like this is super useful. Now another app that aims to do the same thing is an app called Sky Candy. You can set a location and then press the get forecast now button and after a few seconds you will get a prediction of the upcoming sunrise or sunset. Now both these apps do a pretty good job of predicting how colorful a sunrise or sunset is going to be. But something you have to bear in mind is they're not perfect, they're only making a prediction and sometimes they can be wrong. So a top tip I recommend is downloading both these apps and then before you head to a location to capture a sunrise or sunset, you can do a search for that location on both these apps and see the prediction from the two different apps and then make an informed decision on how likely a nice colorful sunrise or sunset is going to be. 
Now another app that has really helped me capture some beautiful sunrises and sunsets is the Sun Tracker AR app. Now if you're waiting to capture a sunset and the sun is behind some clouds, but you know it's going to pop out beneath them clouds and give you a nice colorful sunset, you want to have your drone in the right position ready to capture that moment. But you might not know exactly where the sun is going to pop out beneath them clouds. Well, using this Sun Tracker AR app, you can actually see where the sun is currently at in the sky, even if it is hidden behind them clouds. And you can also see a predicted line as to where the sun is going to be at a future point in time so that you can have your drone in the perfect position ready to capture that sunset. So there you have it, 15 of the most useful apps every drone beginner should know. Now before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you like all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming drone tutorials, then please remember to click that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so that you will be notified whenever I post new videos. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and see a few more of them videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.